Welcome back to Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. With over 80% unsubscribed, clicking that button would certainly mean a lot. The Boeing 747 is a true icon of the skies. There's a reason it is named the Queen, and since its conception, it has successfully changed how travel was conducted. It's also brought with it an everlasting legacy that'll live on for as long as both you and I are currently present on this Earth. That being said, every aircraft will truly be remembered. They can't technically live on forever as industry trends do shift, focus moves elsewhere, among much more, and the time in the sun for specific types will slowly disappear. This doesn't inherently mean that they're bad aircraft, but it means that for all intensive purposes, a retirement has to occur for a life cycle to take place. In the case of the Boeing 747, there are many arguments for when its time in the sun began to end. Some would argue it was before the launch of the 7478, while others would say the global pandemic was the final nail in the coffin. Maybe it was the emergence of the 787. Whichever camp you're in, the consensus is that the desire for a plane like the Queen has dropped considerably. But why is this? Let's explore airlines' shifts towards twin-engined jets. It's a shift that's spurred on from a natural favoring of aircraft types such as your 787A350 and looking ahead the upcoming 777X. But if I really want to get into the last 10 years, well, it's types like the 777-300ER2. Why? Well, because these modern twin-engine planes are engineered with advanced technologies that bring with it enhanced fuel efficiency. This is one of, yes, the more boring reasons, but it is the most basic and logical. As technology advances, this will be implemented into aircraft, and the differences between older and new generation jets should be more than noticeable. Improvements such as these translate to lower operating costs, a crucial factor for airlines' seeking to maintain profitability, especially in this era, with so much fluctuation, so much happening, so many concerns, rising fuel prices, and competition from pretty much every single angle. Furthermore, twin-engine aircraft have begun to offer airlines more than what was initially thought. While they can't necessarily replicate the same capacity levels of aircraft such as the 747, they can definitely offer a more efficient means to travel. With their improved fuel efficiency and extended range capabilities, airlines can finally realize new long-haul routes, tapping into emerging and existing markets using something just a little bit different. Emirates' upcoming A350 operation is really slated to be the perfect example of utilization of one of these next-generation twin-engined aircraft. While they operate the A350, they're equally excited by the prospect of the A350 because they know the potential it is going to bring. Obviously, two twin-engine jets mean that there are two fewer engines on an aircraft, and it is is easier to maintain. The global pandemic has to be discussed if talking about the 747's mass retirement. Several iconic airlines such as your Qantas, KLM and British Airways among others saw travel demand plummet, so there was no longer a need for a high-capacity airliner like the 747. This crisis provided an opportune moment for airlines to phase out less efficient planes earlier than they had planned. That could be in the form of a quad engined aircraft, or very simply in a twin-engine regional jet. But I'm speaking of the 747 retirement, which was viewed by most airlines as a means to streamline a fleet, reduce operating costs, and align with sustainability goals faster than initially imagined, and do so when there was zero demand. That is key. They couldn't have pulled the plug so early on if demand hadn't dropped, so it gave them a bit of an excuse despite all the other financial hardships that they were experiencing. It is a once-in-a-generation, if you will, event, maybe even once-in-a-lifetime, and we saw a lot of change. In some cases, though, the retirement did come back to bite your respective airlines as they were therefore without capacity but for some it didn't and could stand today as the right decision. While a queen in its own right continuing to operate the Boeing 747 presents several disadvantages compared to modern aircraft. Firstly, the 
7's four-engined nature inherently makes it less fuel efficient than its twin-engine counterparts. Higher fuel consumption translates to, in most cases, increased operating costs. When airlines have pushed so hard to drop these and maximize profits, why would you keep an aircraft like the 747 on in this day and age? It simply is not very optimal for most carriers, and the same argument takes place with the A380. But there are a few companies that have made this plane work. The best example I'll always give is Emirates. Maintenance costs are also a considerable challenge for any aging aircraft, but especially the 747. This is a type that's been a mainstay for decades, and while the final iteration of the 7478 is relatively new with most customers, remember it was not produced nearly at the same rate as previous generations. What does this mean? Well, it means that the average age of the active 747s is brought up because of the older aircraft taking over the new ones. And with age comes, yes, some opportunities for your niche freight market, but it also proves a disadvantage for others. Just like an old car, dearly loved, but can see costs mount on to maintain it. What's next for the 747 is the all-important question. Its presence in the passenger sector has dwindled significantly for a host of reasons. Like I touched on the global pandemic played a role, emergence of these next-generation twin-engine planes also played a role, and just lastly, the plane's aging. It won't be around forever. Its future, though, in the freighter operations is something that will be present. The freighter variants throughout history have provided an extension of the program necessary to secure, really, its long-term flying future. Without the 747F, well, there'd be many questions. Unlike the 747 passenger jets, the fantastic capabilities of these freighter aircraft mean, like I said, that the 747F is here to stay, and not just for a few years, but many more decades. This does mean one thing. For people that want to fly a passenger 747, the opportunities have become, let's just say, more and more limited as the years have gone on, and consider them to only get worse as we edge further and further into the future. So ultimately, what can one take from this? There are several reasons why airlines have looked to retire the 747, and almost in every single sense, these are logical. The global pandemic. Why keep an old aircraft on an extra two years when most were predicting demand simply wouldn't return? It was the logical decision. On top of that, why keep an aircraft on when there are better alternatives, cheaper to operate, and so much more. This doesn't necessarily deter, though, from the significant impact that the 747 had. And as I touched on at the beginning of the video, the 747 is going to have an impact for as long as you and I are both alive. And that says a lot. However, in saying all of that, the 747's time in the sun is coming to a close. What are your thoughts on the Queen of the Skies? Do you believe some of those retirements during the global pandemic were the right decision? Or do you think they should have waited it out just a little bit longer considering how quickly demand re returned and obviously the difficulties in acquiring next generation planes because of supply chain issues? Let me know down below in the comments, but I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest aviation analysis. And we'll fly